Take Away Chinese, where you can take some Chinese away and experience progress day by day. Take Away Chinese, we will promise you a difference. Welcome to Takeaway Chinese. I'm Niu Honglin, and joining me today is still our very good friend Steve Hatherley. I'm back. Thank you. In the previous episode, we talked about the China Impression Campaign. We shared a lot of fun Chinese expressions that you can use to describe the country, and also took a look into the China Impression in the eyes of. AI, artificial intelligence. It was a fun journey, and make sure you listen back to the previous episode. Now, let's take a look at some of the replies that we have already collected from our followers online, sharing what they're. Well, actually, we've got different themes. We've got the favorite Chinese dish,、mm. something very important to everybody. Chinese people say, 民以食为天 People view food as a necessity,、yeah. as one of the priorities. I'm pretty sure, Steve. Agrees with that. I certainly, I certainly <laughs> do. I'm living that expression right now. Yes. So, and then we have the experience of people using transportation, public transportation、mm. here in China. And the other one is their stories of making Chinese friends. I、oh, think、cool. these are lovely themes. So let's start with the food one. Actually, when it comes to food, one lovely. Comment we received was from Russ Savage, and he said, "Lanzhou ramen, a Chinese classic, and available everywhere. Very good price, and always clean restaurants. Have you ever tried Lanzhou ramen? I've actually had that on numerous occasions so far, and that ramen, you have to be careful when you are ordering it because there are varying degrees of spiciness. Oh yes, with it, I've had." It where it's、uh, you know that first sip is always the sip where you feel it's the test. You go like,、uh, okay, <laughs> my face isn't melting off just yet.、Um, but I've also had it where it hits your tongue and your face lights on fire. But overall, really, really delicious. And you can find this. I mean, this is almost everywhere. I think this is one of the first dishes that I tried、uh, after arriving in Beijing. Yeah, this is actually also a very common, like you said, it's everywhere. It's a very common, a staple food、yeah. for Chinese people, especially for those living in the northern part of the country. And、um, there are different types, like you said. There, you can find the kind of lamian in different. They, there are very thin ones. There are also relatively thicker ones. And、uh, mostly, when it comes to lamian, I think we're talking about the kind of dish with soap. In it,、mm. and、uh, yes, different level of spice. Yeah,、uh, the noodles they vary in thickness as、sure. well, right?、Um, but the, this ramen you mentioned, more commonly eaten in the northern part of the country. Relatively than, speaking. Oh,、uh, yes. really? Okay, interesting. I didn't know、yes. that. And the thing is, for example, for me myself, I get. Drunk with food quite so much.、Mm. If I'm having that huge and delicious bowl of ramen right there, I will pass out for the entire afternoon. When, when do you eat? Do you eat? <laughs> oh, okay. So you have it for lunch. I have it for lunch mainly. Okay. So this is not a nighttime snack. You, you can. It's not a nighttime snack for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> If it's a、fair. nighttime dish or main dish, it's fine. But、Got、yeah,、it. but it's really, really delicious. I agree with you.、Well, I would think it's very good price and it's available everywhere. One to ten level of spicy do you enjoy?、Ten. One. Oh. Eleven. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Story. When I was、uh, in the consideration phase about moving to China, I came here and I visited with Hong Lim. And a couple of other coworkers, and we went out to eat. And do you remember this? Yes. And、uh, what was that spicy dish that I ordered? It. We went out to dinner, and I looked at the menu and I said, "Oh, I, I want to have this one." And you said to me,、uh, "You sure? That's going to be pretty hot." Yes, Mao Xue Wang. And I said, <laughs> "I said, come on, I can handle. I can handle spicy. No problem." Dish came,、uh, one bite. I think my face went like this. Second bite. And you said to me, "Hmm, I thought you could handle the spiciness." <laughs> I was not very nice. <laughs> I am not going to fight with you anymore. You are. I bow down. <laughs> I lose. You are、uh, the definite、uh, winner for that competition. Yeah, you、Spicy、enjoy it. Spicy food.、Um, there are when we talk about Chinese food. 
actually there are really different types of food we're talking about. Chinese food is a huge umbrella word. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for example, our next comment is talking about something. I'm pretty sure it's something quite common, but I'm not sure if you have tried it. Uh, the comment is from BB Thong, and the comment says the best prawns, fried dumplings, and the best prawns. Wonton only in Suzhou. 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 Yes. Uh, have you yeah. ever tried these? Of course. Ah, of course good. I have. These are amazing. <laughs> Actually, I say that I'm repeating that sentence so many times with each Chinese dish that I try over and over again. I'm constantly saying, "Oh, this is really good. Oh, that's really good too." Um, yeah. Now with the dumplings, dumplings is quite a Broad umbrella yes. term in in China because you can have them filled with almost anything.、Mm. I think, right? My favorite ones that I've had so far, I think, are the prawn and pork、ah. in the same dumpling together. Actually, there are really different fillings: 猪肉、羊肉、三鲜 And nowadays. We talked about China being a country with a huge history, with a long history. Actually, food is. With that same concept, it has a long history. Jiao Zi dumpling has a long history, but at the same time, now we're inventing, we're putting a lot of different new things into the dumpling to, you know, try it out.、Uh, test it. Chefs are getting a little creative. Yes, they're、mm. very creative. Which is why if you go to a Jiao Zi Guar, Guar is kind of like the venue or the place for the. First keyword, jiao zi. So the dumpling place. It's a, for example, restaurant focusing on dumplings.、Ugh. And for that kind of restaurant, actually, you can order different fillings,、Ugh. different types. Gosh, I can、really. stay. I can stay there all day, and it's so cheap too. Yes,、right? it、so、is quite affordable.、So mm. Yes. And then we have Tino's comment saying sometimes the easiest things are the best. We had a lot of great dishes this summer in China, but the very best had been this bao zi from a small street restaurant in the. The West Street of Yangzhou. Baozi, baozi is the steam bun the with filling. The baozi buns.、It. Yeah, there you can understand it as a different type of dumpling as well. You have the wrap, you have the filling. Baozi, but remember it as baozi. Baozi, it feels like a little bit more of a meal to me than a typical dumpling does because the baozi buns are about oh I don't know about yay big, right? And the fillings inside is quite thick and the Bread itself is quite thick, so yeah. You're only talking about one type of baozi. We、oh. also have other types of baozi. How many are there? Um, several. For example, the wrap does not always have to be quite so thick.、Uh. It can be just really this one skin of wrap,、mm. and、uh, it can be steamed, but it can also be fried a little bit. So there are again. You come to China, you will be surprised. I didn't. I've only had the thick one so <laughs> far. In fact, I didn't even know that there were variations on that. So I have more to try. And for the baozi, the word itself, bao meaning wrap,、mm. and zi here is a character transforming the verb into a noun. So if you are、okay. wrapping, then the wrapped thing is a baozi. Ah, got it. Uh huh. So quite easy. All right, Toro. You're gonna have to help me out with Toro's、uh, comment. What does Toro say? Well, he actually, he or she said that 点心是最好的菜。一九九二年，我在中国第一次吃点心。Do you know dim sum? Oh my gosh! <laughs> You're using that word really a lot. <laughs> I know, but it's true. My reactions are are genuine.、Uh, dim sum, I think, is one of the foods we talked about. It. There's so many foods here in China that you'll probably never have. You could live your whole life and probably ha never have the opportunity to try all of them. But dim sum is one of the ones that people know internationally, right? Everybody knows about it. People eat this in other countries overseas. And again, variations on the fillings too, right? So chefs can get a little bit creative.、Um, and again, with dim sum, I love the pork and the shrimp、uh, filler, but my favorite is. Do you know? Do you know what I'm gonna say? Xiao Long Bao. Ah, see,、uh, that's a different types of baozi. With the soup inside.、Yes. Oh my goodness! Do you know how they make that, by the way? How they make the how they get the soup in inside the little. I think with the one that's steamed, actually the filling would 
um, melt? almost like yeah, yeah, almost like melt they, a little bit. Yeah, they make like a jelly out of it. Yeah. And then when they heat it, that jelly melts. My mind was blown when I saw the video on how they make that. I love that. That's my favorite one. I could eat that every day. Ah, that is a very nice dish you can try. And the other comment actually goes to one of my favorite dish. Mm. That's talking about hot pot is the most delicious food that I have tasted. Yeah, that comment is from Russell. Thank you, Russell, for the uh, comment. And talking about foods that you can get everywhere, hot pot you can get everywhere as you well. You can get everywhere. And actually, we have Ben saying hot pot. All arguments after this post are invalid. <laughs> Being very strong and aggressive. Hot, uh, hot pot. Hot pot. Yeah, hot pot is another one of those dishes where you have to be careful about the level of the spice because you have the spicy and then you have the not spicy. Then you can kind of tell, I think, judging just by looking at how red the sauce is on one particular side. What I never tried outside of China, I've had hot pot outside of China before, and I just had the red spicy sauce on one side and then the white not spicy sauce on the other side. Um, what I never tried before, before coming, was the tomato sauce. Oh, there are so many different. Uh, that's the, that, oh, there are even more? There are even more. See, those are the ones that I've tried so far, and uh, I'm loving it. But yeah, really affordable as well. Yes. With, here's my question with Hot Pot, though. The restaurants that I've seen around seem to be quite affordable. Um, lunchtime spots where office workers will eat, they want to eat quickly, right? But I wonder, is there like upscale versions of hot pot as well? Or is this... Of course. Yeah, In like, China, you can find... Upscale everything? You can find upscale <laughs> and also relatively lower scale of mm. everything. Mm. So there are the very affordable type, but you can definitely find kind of expensive hot pot as long as you put in all the in very expensive ingredient. Right. Yeah. That's you can the be, key. That's the key. And also there are, for example, hot pot for especially seafood. Mm. There can be hot pot for different types of mushrooms within the broth. Mm. And then the soup can be really, really tasty. In Chinese, we would say xian, xian mei. It's fresh. It's refreshing with the essence of the ingredient. You cannot really, well, I mean, spice, uh, when I'm talking about the seasoning can be really important. Mm. But if you are able to extract the essence of the ingredient, that is the best in Chinese cuisine culture, in my opinion. Oh my goodness, is this a food show or is, are we learning <laughs> let's, Chinese Let's here? not make it a food <laughs> show. Let's move on to transportation. Okay. <laughs> Actually, when it comes to transportation, one interesting comment we got is from Conrad, Conrad Razi Ki, mm. mm, Razi Ki, saying Shanghai subway was impeccable and they even had a phone charger station in the car. Oh, that's convenient. That is convenient. Yeah, I've been on the Beijing subway um, plenty of times now. I wasn't looking for a charger, but I don't know. Look for I don't, one. I don't Maybe you can if, find one. Don't know if it's there or not. Yeah, that's not something that you'll typically find in a Canadian or American subway. No. I don't think a phone charger. I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been on all of them. But yeah, that's, a, that's an amazing little amenity that isn't often available. Thank you, Conrad, for the uh, comment. And then we finally got Ba Daling comment. Yeah, Would this you like is to do the th Warner? this is from Lasse uh, Stenborg. Hi, Lasse. Uh, me on the train from Ba Daling to Beijing many, many, many years. The challenge of learning Mandarin, as well as the existence of various dialects, is intriguing to many language enthusiasts. Right. Mm. This yeah. is actually very, very interesting. And in the same time, when it comes to the Ba Da Ling story, mm. actually, we have Lace saying, me on the train from Ba Da Ling to Beijing many years ago, a father tried to get a picture of his son together with the exotic man from Sweden. After long talking to the son, the father finally got his photo. My experience from traveling China is 100% positive and always perfect with flight, train, bus, or taxi. However, I never dare to drive my car myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, driving, you know, yeah, I mean, it's easy to take the subway and the train. And driving is a whole different animal, though, yes. right? Because every uh, city around the world has its own driving culture. And that can be a little bit harrowing for, for people who are new to it. I don't know. I'd be interested to try to drive in Beijing, though. It doesn't, am I wrong? It doesn't look that 
bad. It doesn't look it that. It doesn't look that bad. It, it, it's not as bad. It's not that bad. Mm, that's it's good okay. to know. I'm gonna, <laughs> get, I'm gonna give it a try. Someday. Yes, you can give it a try. I think when it comes to experiences, we hear say yi shi zhu xing. That's like the clothing, um, the food. How you stay or where you stay,、mm. and how you go to different places, transportation.、Mm. These are vital aspects of people's living here. I mean, for our great China impression campaign, we talk about your impression about the country, and、uh, we don't want to raise the bar too high for those who have only been, for example, staying here for longer than. Half a year or so,、mm. but for those of you who are visiting, actually, transportation is already a part that you would neglect if the experience is ordinary. Yet, if it's extraordinary, it will definitely leave an impression in your heart. Yeah, and I think the easier it is to get around for people when they're coming to a country for the first time. Or even a second or third time, the easier it is to get around. The more it encourages people to come back and enjoy it again. And I mentioned before that I went down to Xi'an to see the Terracotta Warriors. And the, one of the reasons that I chose to do that trip is because of how easy it was to get there from Beijing. Using the high-speed trains in China when you don't speak Chinese. Sounds like it's going to be an impossible experience, doesn't it? It's not at all. Even the app was in English, so it was easy to book tickets. Once getting to the train station, it was easy to find which platform you were intended to go to, and it was a really lovely experience. The train itself,、um, really clean, on time, exactly down to the one second on time, so you don't have to worry about it being late.、Um, that's the train, but the, the subway itself,、um, clean. Safe again, efficient in terms of time. It's never late either, and、uh, there's plenty of them too. One of the cool things that stood out to me, and this is on line one in particular, and I'm not sure if the lines are different. Oh, by the way, if you want to have a little bit of a chuckle, go onto the internet and search Beijing subway map. <laughs> And, can... and look at the size of、oh. that. That's what I mean by chuckle, because if you compare it to, I'm Canadian, remember?、Mm -hmm. So if you compare it to other Canadian cities that have subway systems, it's huge. It's enormous.、Um, but my experience and it's expanding and it's it, growing yeah, as well, and it's、yeah. getting bigger and bigger.、Um, but my experience being on the subway itself, yeah, all all the things I said, it's stress free actually. And it's English friendly. If if English is a language that you're comfortable with, if you don't speak Chinese, it's easy to get around. But if you get to speak Chinese, you can also interact with people during your journey, and you can talk to people besides you. And if they figure you speak Chinese,、mm. they would be very happy to talk to you, and they will be giving you advice. And you can even make friends with these people.、Mm. And that actually leads us to the next theme of our little China impression campaign: that is friendship,、mm. because. Essentially, when we communicate with people from another country, when we go to another culture, go into deep into another civilization, the most important thing is to have people-to-people -people exchange. I'm talking about real people, talking to someone who's actually be already in the civilization, in the society for long enough, so they understand or they have their first-hand experience and be friends with them. It will. This person will be a door. Open for you into the culture you're looking at. Oh, absolutely, 100. I mean, if you're going to come to any country around the world, well, what would be the point of just staying in your apartment the、yeah. whole time and never talking to anyone? When you get out and you try the foods and you get on the public transportation to、Talk、your to the stranger next to you. Why? Why not? <laughs> and here's my experience of being in China for a relatively short time. Chinese people are very friendly. Beijing people are quite friendly, as a matter of fact, particularly to expats, I would say. But people will generally not come up and talk to you. No, right? We're we're very nice, yeah, introvert that, in a way. That's not a criticism at all because、mm. that doesn't happen in Toronto or Montreal <laughs> or、well. Vancouver or New York or Paris or anywhere.、Um, so it's not a criticism. But here's my point: people will generally not approach you. They won't pay any attention to you. Why would they? But if you do. Ask for help. Ask for directions. Or if you do happen to say something to someone, 
You'll, if you look really lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you will be helped for sure. People are really helpful and really friendly here. And if you're lucky enough to spend a little time, a little longer time in the country and make some real friends, mm. then beautiful stories will come up. Yeah. For example, actually, we've got a very fun story shared by Carla Canales, an internationally renowned opera singer. She has an unforgettable photo taken in Xiamen, mm. East China's Fujian province, and she has a very lovely story behind that picture. Hi, I'm Carla Canales, and I just wanted to tell you about this photo. Uh, this, this moment actually really meant a lot to me. I think the photo, it, it shows, it expresses the joy that we both felt in this moment. This was backstage right after the performance uh, that took place in Xiamen. Uh, Maestra Zhen Xiaoying, who is 95 years old and founded and leads the Zhen Xiaoying Opera Center, of course, a very renowned conductor and educator in China. I was just so, so happy to be backstage with her afterward um, and enjoy the, the music that we had made together and the moment of deep friendship. So this photo really uh, sort of, I think, encapsulates that moment and her smile uh, just means the world to me. A smiling conductor after a performance means everything to any performer, but to have someone who's kind of my, my hero give me such a big smile, it, uh, it was a moment I'll never forget. A lovely, lovely story, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Erwin Gerber. Erwin left us a message on Facebook uh, from Germany, lived in China for many years, and uh, found love here in China Ooh. as well. So this is the most emotional picture I have. Yeah, it was taken in Shashi on a very old Asian bridge. Uh, the sun comes down and was really was the right moment in the right time. It was very nice. I think it was um, made in 2019. So we had no kids at this time. So we were only by our own. So it was nice. I'm, I'm not sure that I was thinking anything. It was only at a really deep, deep moment with my, my wife. Very happy to be there. And uh, of course, if we talk about those who are not particularly already very keen to the Chinese culture and everything, who are a little bit intimidated even by the Chinese language, then I have something that you would definitely, well, besides food, find very, very interested in. That is the very, very beautiful sightseeing you get to see mm. here in China. When we say China is a vast country, it's for sure, and uh, you can find different types of beautiful scene, beautiful sites in different places. And we've received a lot of comments about the places they have visited. Cool. And they've even sent us the picture they took. They shared the kind of beautiful scenery with us. And I have to admit, I myself haven't even been to all of these places, sure. mo the majority of these places, for example, Yang Shuo, Chang Chong Shan, Ta Gong Cao Yuan, Tian Kong Zhi Jing, Zhejiang Wu Zhen. I know for those of you who don't understand Chinese, I'm only listing different places, but actually these are different places in China with different styles, with different different types of beauty. Yeah. We have the very magnificent ones. We have the relatively speaking delicate, but very precious, elegant ones. We have the kind of pictures that is all green, if you take a look at it. The green picture showcases, the lake showcases the huge trees surrounding, trees surrounding the lake. And also there are relatively artificial sites. You've got the modern scene. You've got, for example, uh, beautiful lights decorating the night time city. So all of these can be found in China and hopefully it's yours to explore. Yeah, I mean, it, I guess it shouldn't be surprising. The country is so big that you have so many different types of, of landscapes. You have rivers and streams and mountains and I mean just have a look online and you can see all of the it's like you're going to different corners of the world when in fact you're still all in the same country yes. there's literally everything here and you know talking about transportation before how convenient it is to get around from place to place high-speed train and what have you bus 
uh, airplanes, of course, as well, but you don't have to do too much that's uncomfortable for you to get from location to location, and then one location will be very, very different looking from the one you just came from. Yeah, so thinking about it, it's quite amazing country-wise. We have 75 years of history, of development, of transformation, and we have to admit that for the last 10 years or so, we witnessed the fastest speed of development. Mm. If you take a look at your life 10 years ago, it's completely different from the ones today we have, we are enjoying, we scan a QR code everywhere, we do not bring our wallet anywhere, we use facial recognition, we talk to chatbot online, and all these changes happen over the course of the past decade or so. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about the past 75 years, of course, actually, we've in another show, we did a little comparison and also nostalgia, remembering, trying to collect and compare notes kind of thing, talking about the development oh. we... Yeah, we, we actually the, experienced. The way it used to be versus the way it is now. Yes, mm. and uh, it has been quite different. And actually culture-wise, well, for the Chinese culture, it has been there for, it has been here for thousands of years. And uh, we are very thankful for that thousands of years because without the past, we cannot really have the present. Yes, of course. You can't get to where you're going until you've figured out where you came from and also appreciate that as well. Yeah, so even though now it kind of is like a China impression, but I always call it my China impression because I feel like experience-wise, it's quite personalized. Yeah. Everyone would have their very unique and precious little story that they cherish for the rest of their life, yeah. for the entire of their life. Mm -hmm. But yes, for the China impression campaign now, well, we'll always be looking for comments, but it's this is kind of like a grand celebration of that campaign, of that online event but we'll always keep on looking for more comments more ideas more stories that you would like to share with us absolutely i really enjoyed um seeing or hearing those uh comments from the people who had been to china for either a short time or a long time because I've only been here for a short time, so it's nice to hear other people's impressions as well. It's kind of uh, like knowing what you're getting into a little uh, bit. A, li <laughs> a, a little bit, but you know, when you come to a place for the first time, of course you have certain feelings or certain impressions of things, so you know, you, not everyone has the same opinion, so it was really cool to, to kind of see how other people see things as well. So, you know, a wonderful opportunity today. Yes. And that brings us to the end of today's Takeaway Chinese. I'm Niu Holin with Steve Hatherly in the studio. For more episodes of the show, you can visit our website at radio.cgtn.com and go to the column podcast. You can also listen to the show and read the script there. Find us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Just search for Takeaway Chinese. Don't forget to leave your questions, comments, and a five-star rating. 感谢收听，我们下次再见。拜拜。